So what is going on guys and welcome to episode 61 of the Peter Reunited Career Mode here on FIFA 23. I hope you're well and well you join me in our game screen. And without any further ado, let's not waste any time. We are taking on Brentford in the first of our five games today. We'll be simming this one and the next game against Leeds United. But this is how we line up for this game. As usual, our unchanged side. Elias has grown up now to 85 rated. Which is really good to see a few tired players. But um, yeah, hopefully we should be able to pull through. And then this is how Brentford are probably going to line up. Ortega in goal. Are back for a more Pinnock, Roslav and Sorensen. And Jan out of the base in the midfield with Deli Ali and Matthias Jensen in the middle. Young Coombs on the right. Lewis Potter on the left. And Pinamonti leading the line. And well, hopefully we have enough to get a good result against them. We sure do. 4-1 win. Elias, Garner. Elias and Vidal. So, uh, yeah, very good performance. A very even game in terms of stats, but absolutely blown them out of the water when it comes to the score. And well, if that has set the tone for you, I hope you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel as well as we enter a very, very busy month of December. As you can see there on the calendar, Leeds next in just a few games' time, or a few days' time, I should say. That is our other sim game. So let's get straight to it. Right, second game of the episode, Leeds at home. This time we are unchanged again, and this is how Leeds look to line up. Christiansen in goal, Dallo, Cresswell, Felipe and Tellez is their back four. Enrique, Jenkins, Giabi and Rossi make up the midfield with Constanti Ellis in behind Adi Amy. And well, Adi Amy is a good player. Caused us a few problems in this career mode already, and while we just about managed to get a good result. They take a lead through Adiemi, but then a second half uh, comeback, I suppose. Victor Gomez, Elias and Jankovic on the score sheet. Um, we probably had the better of the game, to be fair, so probably deserved the win. Perveda grabbing a consolation, but not quite enough. So two wins from two to start this episode, which is very, very agreeable, I have to say. As you can see, next up we have... Villarreal in our final Champions League game and then an away trip to Man City before a home game against Manchester United to finish this episode. As things stand in the Champions League, we are top of our group, three points clear of Villarreal, a point enough away at the Yellow Submarine to guarantee top spot and that is what we will be looking to do exactly. So this is our Villarreal lineup then for our first played game. Christian Bravo in goal, who's someone we've actually scouted um, this season. But Wambasaki, Lacroix, Casale, Zinchenko, Kunjovici, Adli, and Neres in behind Jawara. And Dybala, Jawara, of course, the man who scored the equaliser late on against us in the reverse fixture in that three all draw. We, as you can imagine, are unchanged. Um, but yeah, so. 4-4, four, four, oh my word, 4-4-2 four, for four, Villarreal, as seems to be the way for them quite often. I didn't mean to play that pass, but we'll get this back to Blanco as he looks to find a ball. Oh, just in fine, in behind Zinchenko, I should say. Hopefully, he'll have a bit of confidence. Now, Antonio Blanco, after scoring his, I think, his first goal for the club in the last episode against... Uh, Against Liverpool, as Dybala is running the channel here against Tanganga. We'll try and stop something coming in. Victor Gomez does just that. And Estrada can bring this ball away. And now it's Elias on the overlap. Keep this one in. He can't. Excellent. I really like the Villarreal Stadium. Just like how close in it is to the pitch. Look at that bottom tier. Absolutely tiny. But, um, yeah, it's uh, the proper Villarreal Stadium, which is very good to see Tanganga. Get this one back to Galaxy and we'll play this one out fairly calmly. Jankovic has a ball out to Elias, that's where I wanted it to go initially. But uh, oh, the touch away, Ghana. Oh, that's really good defending, I think, from Casale. Oh, trying to get a ball in behind Ghana, in behind for Ghana, I should say. Thought I'd drawn the defenders out enough as Wambazaka burst past net, so he has to try and get back to him. Overcompensated. Zabani tries to get a block on it. And it's Galaxy who turns it over. Darren Neves going over to take the corner. I don't know if it was him who had the shot. But Nets' is overcompensation allowed for that chance. And it will be a goal kick. 
with the header. I thought that Tanganga had just got a touch on that, but it doesn't look... Well, obviously he didn't. Elias. Because now, now Jankovic. There's a ball in here for Ghana. Oh, my word. Been taken to ground by the defender. And uh, you'd think that might be at least a booking. It was a good position. And the Kra it is going to go into the book, the captain, for Villarreal. It sort of manhandles Ghana really here. Yeah, it just sort of clotheslined him almost. But it's going to be Blanco who's going to take the free kick. And we will try and get some whip on it if we can. And laying under the wall, hopefully we can get it up and over. And Antonio Blanco has apparently put us in. There we go. We saw the ball in the back of the net. And well, just as he grabs his first goal for the club, in quick succession comes the next one. A lovely free kick and we will get to see it hit the back of the net this time as he gets it up and over the wall. 22 metres, lovely strike of the ball. But yeah, over and oh, and just in the bottom corner, just beyond the outstretched palm of Christian Bravo in the Villarreal goal. A lovely free kick from Blanco and it gives us a lead in Spain and we will be topping the group as things stand. And there is with Nets for company. Gets it in to Cunha. He has the strike. And Galaxy perhaps unsighted. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's managed to keep it out either way. But it's going to be Adley to take the corner. Tanganga under it. Gets it away just about enough. So Estrada can bring it away. And he's got a lot of space to work with Angel Estrada. And he's got the pace to just get away from his men. Oh, he tries to find Vidal in the middle. But the pass... Really not good enough. And now Dybala with options ahead of him. And it's, well, a fantastic finish from David Neres. Perfectly played ball from Dybala in between defence and goalkeeper. And Neres has got the pace to get there beyond Luca ne Lucas Nets. Or Luca Nets, I think. And, uh, yeah, just look at this pass from Dybala. Inch perfect. Galaxi on rushing. But can't get there in time as Neres just lashes it past him. Makes himself big but under the outstretched arm. But the Real have a level up. How far is 33 yards? Probably too far to have a shot. We'll try and play this into Blanco on the edge. Who has the touch away and has the strike. Forces a save from Christian Bravo. It's actually Vidal who's had the strike. Nice little seat set piece routine. As Luca Nets gets this one in and Garner is there. And it will maybe come off his shoulder. It looked like it not got a deflection, but it is going to be a goal kick. As we brought on a substitution, we brought on Arna Sigurdsson, who uh, hasn't seen too much game time this season so far, to be fair to him. He's, uh, he's come on for Estrada in that number 10 role. Nets finds Jankovic. Switch this one out to Victor Gomez, who will... Move this inside. Blanco finds Sigurdsson. Oh, close control, not quite enough from the Icelandic. Garner Sigurdsson hasn't got the pace to get into that oh, into that position beyond the defender. And again, it's uh, topsy turvy at the moment. Possession switching quickly, and both teams looking to get that second elusive goal. Oh, we've allowed them in there, and we're defending like that. Cunha has punished us. It just allowed him to ghost into the area. No, even ghost, just coast into the area. And well, we could well have thrown top spot away in this game. Ball into him. Zabani's just backed off for whatever reason. And Cunha, it's a lovely finish. Galaxy, absolutely no chance. And well, with eight minutes to go, we need a goal to finish top of the group. And it will be Villarreal who will top the Champions League group and a really disappointing way for that to happen to suffer defeat in Spain after having the lead but we are through that's the most important thing and well on the surface maybe just maybe Villarreal deserve it Shakhtar pick up their first win 3-2 away at Milan but let's have a look at the uh, actually not all the games might have been played so we'll carry on and then we'll look at the uh, Look at the standing. Sorry, I was just reading. Uh, 24 million for qualifying. So looking at the Champions League groups then, this is how our 
Group finish, Villarreal top, of course, on that head-to-head -head record. But we in second, Milan in third, will qualify for the Europa League. So let's have a look at the other groups, who qualified and who we could be playing in the first knockout round. So in Group A, Dortmund finished top, Arsenal finished second, Porto in third. So Dortmund could be an opponent we face. Roma, top City in their group, Michelin going through. So again, Roma, another potential opponent. Group C, Benfica finish ahead of Juventus. So Benfica, another potential opponent. Very tight group there. Hoffenheim only missing out by a point. Group D, PSG ahead of Club Bruges who qualify. Frankfurt in third. And wow, that was a very tight group for the last few places. But again, PSG, a team we could be facing in Group E. Leverkusen top, Barcelona. I don't know what the head-to-head -head was like. Wow, Bayern, Bayern beat Barca 3-0 away from home on the opening game week. And then they drew in the second fixture. So yeah, Leverkusen ahead on head-to-head. -head, but again, a very tight group. Young boys make it to the Europa League ahead of Celtic. So Leverkusen, another potential opponent. Group F, well, two to choose from really. Inter and Madrid qualify. Inter, a potential opponent, Marseille into the Europa League. Obviously, we know our group. Group H, Napoli top ahead of United Sevilla in the Europa League. What's the odds they go and win that? So, none of the English sides finished top of their groups. So, City, Arsenal, us and United. Was it United, the other team? It was indeed. All finishing second. So, we obviously, other than Villarreal, could face any of those top teams and if you're having a look you'd have to say probably Benfica uh, Benfica or probably Leverkusen is the favoured draw you'd have to say we'll have a look and see if it has been drawn knowing our luck we'll get PSG into Milan it is that we have well we've beaten their neighbours twice in uh in this Champions League campaign so far, hopefully we can defeat the blue side of Milan in the knockouts. But for now, we have to contend as we sit top of the Premier League very nicely. I have to contend with Manchester City in this next game. I'll go and do this press conference and then I'll see you in the game. Well, as Blue Moon rings around at the Etihad, this is how City line up. Edison in goal. Walker-Peters, Harwood, Bellis, Diaz and Cancelo at the back. McAtee, Gill and Alcaraz in the middle. Palmer, Haaland and Foden up top. Uh, Gio Reyna there on the bench. Bastoni, Olmo. So some decent options, but having faith in the youngsters, we are unchanged. And we're wearing our home kit because even though it's blue on blue, I feel like the green might have actually been a slightly bigger kit clash, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, we'll have to... Just, it's not too bad, to be fair. As Nets does just about enough, and Haaland comes charging in. But actually, we've dealt with this really rather well. And we need a run at hit. And Garnet wasn't quite providing the run that I needed. But uh, really good tackle from Tanganga. And Garnet brings this one away. And Elias is around the side of Cancelo. And uh, he's going to cut back here. Elias will have the strike. And Elias will score. And that was fairly simple. And with our first attack against Man City, we take the lead at the Etihad in seven minutes. I was going to say, previous to this, of course, last season, we had quite the game against Man City uh, at the Etihad. And we managed to turn things around and win in quite emphatic style. And this occasion, well, no nonsense needed. Elias took it upon himself to come from outside to in and has actually expertly bent that into the far corner. And well, a lovely finish from the Spaniard who hasn't been in amongst the goals a lot in, well, I would say recent seasons, to be honest. Could have caused trouble there. Palmer, Foden, it's a block, but not far away. And we've just let McAtee into it. The area and he's lashed it beyond Galaxy. A, very, a couple of similar goals we've conceded in a game, two games on the trot for whatever reason. Defenders just completely backing off players, just allowed him into the area. And he's absolutely rifled that one into the bottom corner. A good finish from McAtee, and he brings 
City level. Ludow on this left hand side looking to get around Walker Peters. Hasn't really got a lot for company though. We'll find Garner. In turn, we'll find Estrada. Oh, who tried to get the ball round one more. Elias will try and bend one again. Oh, this time it's hit the post. Going for a fairly similar finish to the one he applied about 20 minutes ago. But just a few inches to the left compared to the last time. And it's rebounded off the post. Oh, really good play from Cole Palmer. Oh, it's found its way to Haaland eventually, though. Oh. Breeze past Tanganga has Haaland and applied a superb finish. Tanganga just, <laughs> just absolutely flies past him. And well, maybe I got a bit too exuberant after we scored that first goal because I said this was going to be easy. And Man City have well and truly shut me down. And that is a poor pass. And well, I did say it would be whether we could uh, handle them defensively it looked like to start with that we were going to be able to but now I'm not so sure but Vidal is moving into an area here and is quickly crowded out and quickly loses the ball Nets could do with an overlap and he has provided one we could Nets Garner and that was a fairly simple goal and we will go and celebrate with the Peterborough fans as they rush to the the, uh, the front of the stand. The Man City fans got their head in their hands. Finally, the overlap came from Nets. But you can't leave Garner unmarked seven yards out from goal. And the first time shot into the top corner. Nothing Edison could do. And uh, we've got a bit of a habit of doing this recently. But not long after the second half has started, we found ourselves with the ball in the back of the opposition's net. It's 2-2. And again, this game, just like last season, promising to be quite the game well Vidal is pretty shattered so it's going to be Anthony Alanga to come on ahead of him hopefully the ex-Man United man can help his side to win over his former team's rivals but we're going to need the heroics of Peter Galaxy he looks at his defenders bemused and I am not surprised because Cole Palmer has just been allowed to ghost into the area unopposed and uh, yeah, had another shot on target when Cole Palmer's actually been replaced. Gio Reyna is the man that's come on. Like, I'm a bit confused by that substitution because he's been doing very well in this game as a man at the back post there. Oh. I'm sorry, the commentary's gone to pot. I'm desperately concentrating. Right, now can we counter? Alanga has got a lot of space to run into. He's found Joseph Garner. Is he going to need support? Joseph Garner. Oh, it's just the other side of the post. He could have won it. Although, our City going to have something to say about that late doors? As Reina doing his best to hold off Nets. Oh, it's into the area. Erling Haaland wins it for Man City. This season has been so apparent that just the top teams, their attacking play is absolutely scintillating at times. Zabani goes down to close. I don't even know who that is. Danny Olmo maybe, but it just leaves a massive gap. You can't leave Haaland unmarked there. And with his 10th goal of the season, Erling Haaland... He has won this game for Manchester City. And it's so disappointing from the way we started this game. And there goes the full-time whistle. Oh, heartbroken. It's a reverse of the scoreline from last season at this ground. The players look dejected. The City players really happy with the result. And so they should be. They turned it around. Oh, that's disappointing. You know, City were there for the taking. Maybe a draw would have been a fair result, but very disappointing. And it doesn't get any easier because we have United next. So this is our United lineup for the final game. De Gea in goal. Fosimento, Carmo, Felipe and Tyreek Mitchell. Pedri, Ugachukwu and Pobega. 
Asensio, Ramos and Sancho leading the line. Pope on the bench, Pedroza, Valverde, Barak. So decent options on the bench for them. So, oh, United are in. Um, oh, need so well. Uh, the first time we played United last season at Old Trafford, it was uh, quite the entertaining... Uh, as we take the lead through Estrada, lovely piece of play. It was quite the game because uh, it was one of those old FIFA 21 style games where they played a weaker side, took us for granted as a newly promoted side, and we went to Old Trafford and battered them 3 1. And uh, yeah, teams, not well, some teams have played weaker sides against us, but United certainly not taking us for granted this time round, and so they shouldn't because inside eight minutes. We have uh, picked them apart and Angel Estrada has scored his third goal of the season. Lovely stuff. Oh, Zabani was going to come across and wipe out Asensio, but he's too quick for that. He can't stay with him, Zabani. And he does in the end. When he's faced up with him one-on-one, -on -one, gets a very good interception in. And Estrada has set Elias away. United at sixes and sevens defensively. And Elias cannot bury it. Pass to Heyer. I don't know why he's not taking that on his left. Good. Oh, I thought it was a good touch inside, but Mitchell steps in well for United. And Ramos can lead the charge. And now we've just split apart again. And Sancho is going to race away. And thankfully for us, Galaxy has saved the day. But we have done that far too many times defensively recently. And Vidal is just going to go. He's going. He's going. No one's keeping up with him. Vidal. Oh, he's hit the post. Oh, how lovely would it have been for him to finish that off. After all that, he just found the gap and went and motored. Used that 99 pace and acceleration. It's absolute perfection. Oh, my word. Garnet is in behind here again. And Garnet, well, has made it 2-0. That was a lovely through ball. I'm not even sure who played that, but saw the gap immediately, exploited it. And moments after we should have taken a 2-0 lead. We do take a 2-0 lead. But this time it's through our talisman. And it's Blanco with the first time ball. Thought Garner might have been offside to be honest. Bouncing and bobbling. But it just settled for him at the right time. And De Gea not getting towards that. And well we go from one end to the other. Lovely play. Lovely play. And Elias could be away here. We'll cut this one back. And it's Vidal who has the strike and he will find the back of the net this time. A lovely arrowed strike into that far corner. He celebrates in front of the travelling United faithful who probably all are from Peterborough. But even still, the fans in raptures and they know how good a performance is this. But that passage of play, absolutely superb. Just turn United inside out from back to front. And Vidal... Arrowing one into the far corner. Lovely finish from him. 3-0 against league-leading Manchester United. Nice passage of play from United. Mitchell is forward into Gonzalo Ramos, who has rifled that one towards the top corner. Thankfully, Galaxy gets a big, strong hand to it. And uh, they're going to bring on Valverde. Man United, I'm going to make a change of my own. Substitution for us, Elias coming off. Anthony Alanga coming on against his former side. That would be nice for him if he can get involved in a goal. And, well, he might be able to hit because he's just raced away from Fosu Mensa. He's in behind here, Anthony Alanga. And he will find the back of the net with an absolute aplomb. What a finish from Anthony Alanga. Literally seconds, well, recording seconds, minutes in game after coming on. He has fired this one past De Gea. And you aren't getting more top corner than that. That is special from Anthony Alanga. A top quality finish. He's done it off the bench again, as he did. I'm pretty sure against Shakhtar in the Champions League. Oh, Vidal, as Rob Fossey meant to hit. It's a little ball in behind for Garnet, And Garnet has played this one superbly. And we have made it 5-1 against Man United. They have just fallen apart. In recent minutes in this second half. And it, well, the fans cannot quite believe it. 
in the run-up towards Christmas, this is quite the present. And I'm fairly certain it has been United leading the way in this episode in terms of the league. And they have turned up to Peterborough. Have been absolutely dismantled. 5-0. Gomez does supremely well. And that's... Estrada could be away. I know it's a really good ball to find Joseph Garner, who's in behind. And Joseph Garner will not make any mistakes. He will find the back of the net. And a counter-attack makes it 6-0 against Man United. Yes, we are still definitely playing on ultimate. I promise you that. But they have just been so easy. And well, this is almost like FIFA 21 all over again. They're playing a strong side. But they are taking us for granted. And we are picking them apart. There goes the final whistle. As it comes up in the corner. Garner has 16 goals in 17 Premier League games. Well, he's got at least a hat-trick today. Yeah, it is a hat-trick. Who else scored then? Alanga. Bidal. Can't even remember who scored the other one for us. Oh yeah, Estrada with the first one. Of course it was. My word. After defeat to Man City. That's not a bad way to... Uh, bounce back is it absolute domination in terms of shots and well possession as well we had very good possession compared to man united and well as things stand that puts us third in the premier league ahead of united now we're still above city a couple of points above city but two points off of arsenal and of chelsea we have the best goal difference of any team around us and we've just dealt a significant blow to Man United's goal difference as well. But we're getting close up to the top of the table. Just two points now as it was instead of three. But um, yeah, we're looking fairly comfortable so far this season. And we're still in with a title challenge almost halfway through. So looking very good. But Arsenal and Chelsea, two sides that have already beaten us so far this season. I mean, we've lost to who? Arsenal... Chelsea, did we lose to Liverpool or did we draw? We lost to City. Did we lose against someone stupid? Lost to City. No, we drew with Liverpool. Lost to Chelsea. Lost to Wolves. That was probably a sim game, I think. I'm gonna, yeah, it was a sim game. But when the two sides above you are teams that have beaten you this season, you can't really complain. So in terms of the next episode then, we have uh, well we have Norwich in the league, United in the Carabao Cup semi-final. They'll certainly be looking for revenge. Leicester, Brentford, I think we'll squeeze another game in as well. We'll have those four and then we will play Liverpool at the start of January and move into the January period. And then, uh, yeah, we will go from there. I'm thinking... In terms of January business, I'm going to try and make a marquee sign. Maybe a marquee signing in central midfield. But I'm not 100% sure yet. But guys, that is the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one.